Welcome to Emily's Paper Caper, where I love to scrapbook, make cards, rubber stamp, and junk journal. Today I'm going to bind a junk journal with the cinch. My friend Erin gave me this cinch. She was not using it, and I'm thrilled to have it. And I've started to bind my junk journals with it. So I thought it would be fun to come on and show you how I do this. And if you like to make scrapbooks or journals or even notebooks, the cinch is a great way to do this. I give new life to papers and things in my stash and book page and just anything you can think of, you can make a book with it. I will link to this product as well as the wire I'm using to bind it on Amazon. I'm an Amazon associate and receive a commission for qualifying purchases, but I wanted you to be able to check this machine out if you're interested in getting one for yourself. It is a bit of an investment, but not as expensive as you might think. And it, it's a lot of fun to create journals. So I like to use a simple center punch approach to binding my journals. Rather than trying to make the holes even and all the way to the edge of the books. I'm just going to use the 12 punches that the machine will make and just center it and not worry about the half inch or so that will not have wire. Now, if you wanted to, you could follow the directions in this video up in the card that shows you how to use this arm extender and how to pull out the punches to bind any length of book and make the holes go to the edges. I've just found that this is easier, a little quicker, and meets my needs. So it'll also be easier to show you as well. So a little bit about the covers for this book, and I will flip through the book uh, at the end so that you can see it, but I've decided to do an ocean themed journal. I covered a grape nut cereal box with fabric and added some paper to the inside and I thought this would make a very pretty cover for an ocean themed journal. I have the center here marked at four and a quarter. My pages are eight and a half inches high the center of the page lines up with the center marking on the machine, and I'm simply going to punch through that cover. And it looks like this. It punched through that, that fabric and the cereal box without an issue, just like butter. So now I will punch my book page and I'll do several pages at a time. I've just marked them with post-it notes so that I, I know which side is I want towards the front of the book because I have some embellishments on some pages that would be a little thick and I want those towards the outside of the book. So let's start punching the pages. I'm going to take my time and just do three pages at a, at a time. And then when I'm done with this, I'll show you how I add the wire binding and close the binding. Then if you watch until the end, I will also do a flip through so you can see what the pages look like. I had asked my friend Erin if I could borrow her cinch and she surprised me and said, not only can you borrow it, you can keep it. I was like, really? That's so nice. And she said, if I ever need it, I know you'll let me borrow it. I said, absolutely, absolutely. 
So I've been going to town making junk journals and notebooks with the cinch. It's an aptly named tool for sure because it is a cinch, it's easy. Especially when you do the center cut approach. Okay, so the back cover of the book, I want to punch it facing up. And now we're going to turn the machine to the side because I'm gonna use this little rack here to hold the wires while I load the book. And I know there are 12 punches and so I need to use my wire cutters to, to cut this off. I only need 12 of these loops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this can be just set aside and I can use it for a smaller book with you know, a different book sometime. So we put the cover and the back cover on last. So we want to start with the back of the book. If you have a page order, you want to put the last pages on first. I do have a page order, so. I've been wanting to make an ocean themed book and I want to take a trip to the ocean and fill it with photos and journaling and ephemera from that trip. I don't know when I'm going to the ocean, but I will at some point, and this book is gonna be ready for that adventure. You put the front cover on, and then you put the back cover on, and you want the back cover to face the front cover, just like that. Then we're gonna lift this up and we're going to go to this side of the tool. I have a one inch binding, so I'm gonna turn this to one inch. And there's a little place right here where you put the book and we're just going to Press those wires down. See how that looks? And mischief managed. The only thing left to do to turn these little ends with the, see this little end, you just don't want to have that sharp sticking out. So you just bend it over like that. Let's give a flip through. So for the cover, I used the words on a branding strip. We travel not to escape, but for life not to escape us. And I've got plenty of room in here to, to fill it up. It might be a little bit alligator, but I don't mind that. I've used lots from my scrapbook stash and scrapbook paper stash to decorate the pages, left lots of room for photos and for journaling. This is some washi tape. I tried to use some ocean themed washi tape. I made some collage clusters. Stickers, this is Dollar Tree ribbon and another Dollar Tree ribbon. I got out some of my stencils and did some stenciling on some of the pages. There's an example of some stenciling and it's on a note card, added some more Dollar Tree ribbon there.
another note card for journaling or I could put photos there. Some scrapbook paper. This is also washi tape. Had some shells, shells embellishments. They're a little bulky, but I tried to spread them out across pages. So this will be a hybrid memory book slash junk journal. It will force me to plan a trip to the ocean. Give me something to look forward to, right? on scrapping and paper crafting, everyone.